by everyone. And the highest compliment the people of Florida paid this man is he is a total gentleman. Jean Claude Ballou. Thank you. Today I would like to talk to you and I will be very happy to answer your questions as far as higher procedures are concerned. I do not know if you have the schedule, but tomorrow there will be something that should be a great help for you. It will be that we will put the dog or more on the field, we will make him go through the fire, and uh, some of you who wish will be over there with your judge sheet, and you will try to score the dog. And I am pretty sure that will be an eye opening for you. Uh, today we are just going to talk about the normal procedure. You go to the field, what are you supposed to do? Well, first of all, when you enter a trial, you should know the rules. It is teamwork. And you must, first of all, when you arrive, you present yourself to the church. This happens when you present yourself for tracking, and for obedience, and for protection. The church is, has 10 dogs a day, which means you see them in three phases at 30 dogs. Or you might be so and so, but when you have so many dogs, you know, it is nice to make sure we score the correct piece of paper here. Uh, you, have, you have three things in procedures. You have the mandatory requirements, which you must follow absolutely. You have the desirable requirement which is, I'm not going to take some points of view or whatever, but which will influence psychologically the judge on the kind of person and not you are. Then you do have the things that are absolutely forbidden. Verboten, interdit, no, no. Those you have to be very careful also. The mandatory procedure for example, they start from the start, packing. You present yourself with your dog, who you are, who your dog is, and the way is going to indicate that article. Now, very often people forget to tell the judge, he has to ask, does the dog indicate, which is points out, or pick up the article? You must tell him. The way you present yourself, is going to reflect on you and on your dog. It's not going to take you points off just like this. However, you have the handler who present himself to the judge. First of all, when he's called, he's let. And you know, when we run tracks, we always try to time the schedule so that dogs can be run as close as possible to the required aging of the track. If the track is 30 minutes, we try to make it as close as 30 minutes in order to help the dog. If we need five minutes to find you, five minutes to find the next guy, etc., you have at least three or four tracks that have been named. So that is not fair to the other handlers. Now you have the fellow who is himself, let, you know, unshed, dirty thing. Oh, hi, uh, uh, I'm I am John, and that's, uh, uh, that's Jojo here, and we come for uh, children one. Very often they don't even tell you that. Well, you see, already, that's a sloppy handler, and um, very often his dog will work sloppily. It's as simple as that. Uh, of course, the judge is not going to say, oh, he's sloppy automatically. But let's face it, the judge is a human being. And uh, he has a tendency to be influenced subconsciously. I don't know if we are a psychiatrist here, but I'm sure he could explain that much better. But this is the idea. On the other hand, you have the handler. And uh, I would like, for example, take the example of Phil Osher, who is very experienced to go for winning, so every little edge head. That man, when he presents himself, is very correct. He's clean. We don't ask him to be in, in his Sunday clothes. 
but it's clean, it's ready, you call, you say, okay, next dog, right here he is. I'm Phil O'Shea, this is my dog, so, so we can for shoot some wine, my point, my dog needs to be This makes a difference. Those are small details. But when you go to a trial, you must go with a competition spirit. The day of the trial is not, oh, I'm going to go for my shoot from one or two or three, and here you go. Oh, it's time to call your dog. Oh, my dog. Okay, you go. Oh, that dog needs water. No, that's not the way you, you get points. You are ready. All that day, the day of the trial must be geared to your dog. Uh, the day of the trial, before the day of the trial, I always tell my friend, please forgive me, but don't try to approach me, because my dog comes first. You can say hi to me, say hi. Want to talk? No. I think my dog needs to start to give him water, or it's time to make sure it's relieved, or it's time to take him out of the car, or it's time to make a little build up for obedience or protection, whatever I need, that dog will need. But my old day is geared to that dog. And I go to listen to the critics. I check the dog. Oh, he did that. What is our measure judge? How many points did he take up for that? Does he feel it's not that important? Or is he really a, a rule, uh, you know, going by the book, by the book, and did I sneeze at the time, he takes me two points off? Those are the things you need to know. Because you have the rules. The whole book, it is true, but the difference between judges is the interpretation of the rules. I, you can read a complicated sentence, each of you, and you will have ten opinions of what it means, especially if someone has put a comma at the wrong spot. So it is very important to see how it interprets. And uh, this is why the Delta Trial is not a fun day if you go for the points. Give it to your dog. In the evening, you have it, you can relax, drink beer, and enjoy yourself. But the Delta Trial, that's a fight. Uh, consequently, first, to present yourself, know what you are doing. Uh, we know that people, especially usually beginners, are going for shoots and one are very nervous. Well, think of one thing. When you go to the judge, well, there is not a monster. Uh, I even say sometimes that judges are human beings. I know some people don't believe me, but it's not. Uh, so don't be afraid of the judge. He's here to help you. But of course, you know, he has rules to follow. Think that your dog starts with 100 points in each category of shelter. If he doesn't get 100, it's because you lost something or your dog lost something. Uh, also, you have to, a common mistake I see is that you have people with their dogs, the dog make a mistake, and they get so upset that all their work after this exercise is negatively influenced because they think about it, they think about it. And that's really a wrong approach because you are nervous and that nervousness communicates to the dog. Personally, I believe from some experience, and I have not, nothing scientifically to prove it, but I believe that your dogs not only take cues from your body movement or voice. It seems to me that there is also a connection between the brain wave, your brain waves and the dark brain. It might be cool one day, but I'm pretty sure of that. But it's just a theory of mine. So, it means that if you are nervous, you make the dog nervous. And consequently insecure and he starts to make a mistake. So, you make a mistake, it's done, period. You have that guy with his book, he has knocked you down some points. Forget it, it's over. Concentrate to the next exercise. And try to do it as best as you can. That is done, next exercise. And you will be surprised how much better, better you perform. So, in tracking, for example, and I will especially talk for the uh, shoots and white people, which supposedly have less experience, unless you have tried a few dogs already in Schutzen. 
you bring up yourself to the judge. But first of all, you will lay the track. The, I see two kind of people when we judge. You have the beginner, which is very nervous, as, as I said. This is the thing, the most important really that we see in people. Then the person lay the track. See, the person do not know. Of course, the church tells you you are going to go in the, in the direction of this tree. When I whistle, you make a right turn. When I whistle twice, you drop your article, etc. We find that people have a tendency to let the track more, much more difficult than they have to. This is because they are inexperienced, but also because they didn't care about reading the rule or watching. Because unless it is your first trial, you have never been in a shooting trial before. And if you are, if you are trial your dog, you should have been watching trials before anyway. They make it extremely difficult for the dog. For example, the kind of mistakes you see from where the judge is. Some judges follow the dogs. Personally, I do not. Uh, I prefer to check at a certain spot and I know exactly where your corner is and your, where your article is. I have a better point of view from where I stand. But uh, this means that the judge cannot see in that field if 100 yards from it, you, from it you have a big patch of dirt. Or if, if you have a chicken bones over there. How do you want me to know? Now, for two and three, of course, it is a track layer uh, who is not the handler. But this is why you must be chosen carefully to know what to do in such circumstances. But you, when you lay your track, you're shooting one track. You follow the direction when you have to. The judge tells you whistles, which means right turn. You make your right turn. It might happen one day, for example, that you have it's right in the middle of a patch of dirt. If you follow it blindly like the book, you are going to make the turn or shoot someone in the middle of the dirt? Or in the middle of the chicken bones? Now, if this happens, you see this, take two or three more places, how much your turn? To leave the judge before you make your turn exactly when it is told. But if you come back after you told him there was some dirt over there or something like that, he will say all right. In fact, if you have something like chicken bone and things like that, I will tell you right away, make a big sign to the judge. Then you will check and you will have another track. If you shut your mouth, it is too bad. I remember once we had a track and we ran the track. The dog was tracking beautifully until the second corner. On the second corner, catastrophe. Who blew all his corner? Then, after that, pick up the last leg and finish extremely well. But the dog lost the corner, and the corner to shot one hairs. And the handler, after it was over, told me, Yes, there was a big patch of pink gravel when I made my turn. Why didn't you tell me when you had a track? It's not after it's over that you are going to change the score. But if you do it before, surely we have the track. That, that, that happens. So you must have fast reaction. Do you have any uh, question on that on tracking before we go to obedience? So make it easy on your dog. The corners. <coughs> Uh, first, one of my nephew for the trial to know that, is that I see Schutzer as not just as a show exercise, but the way it was intended to, which means to be a realistic protection dog. Now a track, the idea of tracking in Schutzer is to have a dog follow the track laid by a potential criminal, on being exactly on the track so that if there is any cue or evidence, the dog will be able to indicate it and permit you to find it. Like the man lost a wallet or something or dropped a revolver, a weapon. 
You know, so this is the idea, why should some require so much precision? The corners, especially in Schutzel 1, people have a tendency to make corners, which of course makes it extremely difficult for the dog. Now, I've never seen a man escaping from somewhere and making a turn in a street like this. I don't know if you've seen one. So why don't you make it a little bit smoother? So I don't ask you to make a corner that will take all the room. But there is a big difference between a sharp corner and a little smoother, more natural one. You will help your dog tremendously. Unless you have a dog, of course, which has already been trained to such a level that he doesn't need such help. But you do not find many, and I'm pretty sure that will help your dog. And uh, when you lay your flag, at the flag, make sure you take your time to put a good set. Uh, the, the rule now, before you could, after, when you lay your flag, let's say, let's say this is the starting flag, you, you walk here, you put a good scent, and you could go a few paces and come back. This is not permitted any longer. However, especially if you sell one, you lay your own track. But the judge normally tells you, okay, go over there, lay your track. Well, you do not have to go at an angle. You can start to go, let's say you are going to put your flag here. You are here, nothing tells you you cannot walk like this. And make your sand and make your track. When it is time for to run your track, rather than going here, come here. Don't ask your dog to track before. But if he has the cue of the harness, of the leash under the leg, or whatever you do, I'm pretty sure he will already have the idea of scenting. That gives him a little idea when he starts to smell, and boom, that big scent here. That helps. Don't be in a hurry to start your track. This is one thing too many people start too fast. The dog did not have time to memorize that scent here. There's somewhere we can get lost, especially if you are with. Yes, sir? Can you give them an example of a dog or, or a trap that would bring in a perfect 100? I know many people feel that their dog tracks good and they can't figure out why they really didn't get a 100 in a trap. And I know you've given one. Could you give them an example of it? Uh, how do you want me to do that? Do you want me to track here? Explain to them the way it's before that you gave the 100 to Dick and what he did to track to get a 100 from you. Because I know you have not given very many 100s. No, I never gave a 100 uh, for a dog earning a degree before, but he's still on. I went to Florida and he almost blew my mind because I gave three the same day. <laughs> I could believe that. Uh, okay, a dog that will get a 100. Let's take the example of a shoots and one. It is the same for a tree, just, it's just a huge shape. Okay, let's say the track is laid this way. You have one article at the end and one article approximately in the middle of the second leg. 100. First, the handler will approach the church with his dog on leash the left side, and he will present himself and tell the church, let's say, my dog points out. Fine. As a matter of fact, by the way, you do not have to tell your dog, your judge, if the dog lay down or sit. If you tell me your dog lay down and he, he only sits, he has to get deduction. If you just tell me he indicates sitting or going down are both good. Of course, the dog has to do the same thing both time. Otherwise, that means one is wrong. But I mean, this is a little edge. You should take advantage of. Okay, so the handler presents himself with his dog. And the judge will tell him, okay, when you are ready, you know, relax, take your time, and go out. The handler will put his long line, or whatever. He might even put his long line before. You know, it is at his option. 
uh, as far as Kanye is concerned, I think it might be smarter for him to put him just after, because this is a cue to the dog, and rather than having the dog uh, do a sit close to the judge, you know, when he put that line after, then, okay, track it. He would approach that flag, at the angle he wishes, the, this is not the judge concern, he will let the dog take a good scent, let the dog start on the track, and he must stay at the starting flag until the whole line is out. You cannot start. This is a common mistake, by the way. And I think it's made mainly by mistake. People are nervous, they don't think about it. The whole line must be out before you start to follow the dog. The dog must go, must go at a constant speed during the whole track, and at a speed which is comfortable for a human being, which means it could be a constant speed running. No, this is not good. You must be able to walk comfortably behind your dog. Of course, that gives you a certain attitude of speed anyway, but the dog must be constant. If the dog arrives at the corner, it turns like this. I didn't mind to, I didn't mean to erase But he turns without stopping. The dog may stop and check the different corners, the different angles. This is still permissible. He could even occasionally go, let's say, one foot to the left, one foot to the right, or to the front. If you have wind, like for example, coming behind the dog, you would understand that the scent is blowing the farther. So in such unusual circumstances, it would be permitted to go a teeny bit behind. But of course, circling at the corner is, uh, you know, it's no good. The dog comes at the article, and let's suppose it is a dog that down. He must stop at the article immediately down. And I mean not a slow down. It must be a neat pump down. The handler goes to his walk to his dog, lift his hand with the article to the judge, which, uh, by the way, this article should be in front of the dog. The dog should not pass it. The handler put that article in his pocket, take the line, and restart the dog, basically like he did at the beginning, except that there is uh, no need to make the dog smell a little longer. Dog makes the second corner like the first one, smoothly, arrive at the last article, nice, clean, down. No slowness, no hesitation. The handler will show this article to the judge, put it in his pocket. The track is over, but the, the handler and the dog must go back to the dog. And you do that, you get 100 points. You? Indication? Uh, if you want to go by the rule, it says indicate. I don't care the way the dog indicates. You can have the dog seated, you can have the dog standing, you can have the dog barking. That's your choice. In the, as long as the dog shows you, without a shadow of a doubt, that he has found something. This is not indicating. Uh, this is the other part that we said pick up. Uh, the dog can pick up the article, hold it in his mouth, standing, sitting, or bring it back to the handler. Uh, we do not see many people doing that because uh, it seems it seems there is no reason to make the task more complicated. Because if you have to turn at the dog at the article, all the dog has to do is to find it and lay down. If you have the dog that retrieves the article, not only he must pick it up, he must bring it back, he's not permitted to mouse it, he's not permitted to drop it, he's not permitted to play with it. You look for trouble. But this is permissible. Yes, sir. You say the judge gives you a reasonable amount of time to get started. What's a reasonable amount of time when you on your scent pad starting out? That. You mean when you lay the track or when you come with your dog? No, when, when you're starting with the dog. It's up to the judge. 
as long as your dog is sniffing the ground or uh, if you let a dog uh, down, if it's your way to do it, you can stay 30 seconds up to one minute. And this is quite a long amount of time, really. And usually uh, what happens is that it is the opposite, the other is so impatient. That may not look so long, after 10 seconds, he's gone. Now, you know, it's, it's very, uh, you know, flexible, when you say uh, reasonable, you know, uh, if you start to lay your dog down and start to light a cigarette, you don't read your magazine, you know, that would not be reasonable. <laughs> but uh, dog, a dog must not be rushed. You know, and judges, uh, you know, DVG judge especially, uh, they are not only handlers, they have to show dogs to keep their license, but they are trained different dogs, uh, they have been around the training director, so, you know, they know what it is about. You won't be on the risk, you know, to have a problem. Okay, does that answer, please? Go ahead. In shifts, and you can track with a harness, but also you can track on the collar, and the lunch line, the tracking line can be under the dog's leg, that's correct? Yes, this is correct, yes. You can, have, you can use a harness, or you put your attack. You can use a long line, or you can even have your dog off leash if you want to. But the dog must be at a constant speed. And you must keep the length of the line, which means 10 meters, about 30, 33 feet behind the dog. Yes? One of the differences between judges is what is the target that's handling? Some dog will pull the line out very tight, or keep a tight line, others just like to see slack on the line. What do you consider to be the handling of the dog? I don't care, I'm judging the dog tracking. I'm not judging the way you can handle the line. It's your choice. Well, I, I meant, what, what is an indication to you that the handler is actually directing the dog on the track? Well, if the dog pulls the dog back, or sideways, I will see if the, if the dog is walking here and the handler is here, when the track goes over there and the guy is here, I'm trying to bring the dog back, I will see it. Or if the dog passes at the corner, uh, and I see the other holding the dog. And I, in fact, now I'm not going to give you my secret here, but I don't even have to see the handler to know if the dog has been pulled. You have other little things you can see. So, anything that would be a help to the dog, you know, is something that is less than perfect. Perfection is the dog who does the job on his own. Now, the severity of the penalty will depend on if you go for a one, a two, or a three, and how much help you give. Yes? If one is tracking with a chain training collar, regular, uh, should the line be on the dead right? Yes, in, in Shutsan, the line should be on the dead ring. Yeah, in, in, in obedience or even in protection. By the way, I don't know if you are uh, aware of it, but before the protection work, uh, laser colors were permitted. They are not anymore. So you have to be with a regular choke chain or nylon chain. Uh, the reason for that is that, you know, you have to realize that the European, especially the German, have been in Shutsan for 80 years. And uh, with their imagination, they have time to devise a lot of little tricky help to the dog. Uh, there has been some modified colors. Uh, to an extent where some people went to the extent of using electronics uh, miniature speakers in the colors. So now you cannot use it anymore. Uh, this doesn't... Uh, the, don't feel that it does any harm to your dog anyway, because even if your dog is accustomed to do protection, for example, with leather color for comfort, the day of the trial, uh, the day you use, you are going to grab that color, it's only when you bring your dog on some escort, on the courage test anyway, when you want it, it'll be so tense. Once in a while, that's not going to kill him. So there is nothing to worry about this. Except that on obedience, the dead ring also, correct? Yes. Is that both DBG and, uh, and SV rules on the leather collars? 
the, those holes are not as we are DVG holes, they are VDH holes, which is German, cannot uh, drive out Germany. And those are the holes for working down the shoots and holes. The holes are not made by SV and DVG, they are exactly the same. Uh, so, at time, if you are judges from SV or DVG, at time you find, might find some differences, uh, less now, but I remember five, six years ago, we had differences which came mainly because those people came to America and they saw those plots, you know, they know nothing. Uh, the way we were acting, it's face it, it really looked like that, like this way, like this way sometimes. So they took some liberties with the rules, but it is not any longer. Uh, if you are judge, of course, you know, with an experienced judge or a judge rather like uh, in the SV, for example, a core master, which comes from grid survey, is permitted to judge with some trial. But maybe judge uh, should some trial one or twice a year or not at all. You know, so obviously that makes a difference. And the last difference that happened is, like I said, those rules are written at that time you have to make an interpretation. Uh, for, for example, one day something is not clear, so the NRO, which is the chief for trial of judges of the DVG, is going to send a letter to his judges and tell them that paragraph must be read and interpreted this way. Now it could happen that the NRO of the ESV sent a letter to his uh, judges and tell them, wait a minute, that should be interpreted this way. So you might find some slight difference here. But it is, it is not, uh, it is minor really. And this is why it, it is always good uh, to see the people before you in a trial. So to find out what is happening here, it helps. Okay, so let's go to obedience. Obedience. Okay, obedience, same thing, you arrive on the field. You present yourself to the church. Your dog is on the leash, the leash of the dead ring, except for shoots and three, of course. Shoots and three, the dog present himself off fish and leaves the field of fish. This is true for obedience as well as for protection. You present yourself to the judge, the one you did in tracking, who you are, etc. Uh, incidentally, a problem the judge find quite often is that you have a fellow I came and this is my dog Bambi here. And you look in your book, you don't find any Bambi. Because the real name of the dog is uh, Falk von der blah 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 von der Deutschland. So please use the register name. And especially Bambi, you can have two or three Bambi in the trial. No, seriously. And so it is, uh, it can lead to confusion sometimes. So you present yourself and uh, you go through your routine. And this is where it is important for you to know the rules. People do not read the rule book. There are so many indications here. Your dog make a little cuckoo. What do you do? When there you are fun, you see people standing still. Let's say, for example, you ask your dog to jump. Jump! And the dog doesn't move or go at the foot of the wall and there's nothing. And people are in complete panic. They say, heal. The dog comes back to it, jump, and the dog goes. That's not luck. Every exercise starts and finishes with a, in the basic position, which means sitting and heal. You have called your dog back to heal. Exercise finish. That's 15 points. It hurts. If you had been a little less upset on knowing your rule a little more, you would have given another one comment, which means another comment. In obedience, you lose 20% of the points for this exercise. Supposing the dog does it, does retrieve everything else perfectly, you would have lost 3 points in place of 15. That's much better. You feel your dog is too close to that jump, there is no way he can jump it. You know, there is one thing also. You give a second command to the dog, he cannot jump. You say, I gave my double command. Don't move, you cannot move. That, that's another. Try another command. What do you have to lose? 
in the doctor's exam doesn't think that you have lost your 15 points. Try it again. The dog is too close to the jam. One thing to do, you, you know, you know your dog, you know he won't be able to jam this because he's too close. Call him back, but be careful, don't let him come at his. When he's close to you, give him a command again. So he has room up to jump. Now, truly you will be penalized. But again, you won't lose 15 points. And every point counts. Right? So you have to use your head. But in order to do this, you must know the rules. You must know what will cost you the less points, depending on what you do. And for that, you must know the rules. It's not when the dog is making a mistake that you have to say, whatever well, the book says on page 23, blah, blah, blah. No, it must come fast. And the good exercise I would suggest to you, which has proven to be excellent in other sports, reverse the trial in your head. Reverse your pattern, your turn. You come to the gym, for example, etc. Not only reverse, but try to imagine, okay, my dog issues the jump or whatever. Or my dog goes well, come back on the side. What do I do? Now the first time you do that, you might be thinking for five or ten minutes to find what is the best answer. But if you do it, the Delta Triad will remember. And it will help you. Alright, so in obedience, uh, you should know a pattern. There is no required pattern in healing. All you, have to, all you have is a requirement of what you must show, which is, you must go, depending on the degree of course, uh, 50 paces in one direction, and come back 50 paces. Then after you are on your own. You might, on your way back, you might make your slow or your fast, your choice. Then you have to show, you also have to show a right turn, a left turn, and an about turn, but in fact you made it by your first back. Plus, of course, you go to the group. That is all you have to show. Now what I suggest is that you just study a pattern with, which will have all the requirements and stick by it. This way you get conditioned to it. In fact, your dog will get conditioned to it too. Now I know it is training, we don't want to condition the dog too much, but in a trial, a little help doesn't hurt. So decide on your pattern and do it. Stick with it. Like I said, there is no sequence. You know, except that requirement to go in a straight line and come back. Uh, the group, the, the way the group is done, uh, this has changed also. Uh, before we had a group of at least four people milling around. Now it is a straight line when you have a few persons and they walk in one direction very slowly. And you go, it is more realistic, it's easier too. You go with your dog and you wave around them, like making a S with you. You go at the end, you make a complete turn and you do it again. Back. 
Then after you do what you want, you have to make a right turn, a left turn. You can even do the fast on snow when you come, when you come back. Yeah, but still in a straight line. It is your choice. Okay, I will show you the book exercise. The, the old way first on the new way. Uh, there is not much difference really, sir. So. What we really want to see the dog is with you when you make uh, a circle and uh, when you have the distraction of people around. So it's not really... Okay, uh, the way we are normally making it, you know, let's say you have five people and you come back from uh, your healing or leash. You will enter the group, you know, you can make, you know, a one or two term hold. Then you take off again, you make another turn, and you exit, you do your healing of fish. But of course, before you make your healing of fish, uh, you have to come back in the room. Normally, you leave off fish, you are supposed to go a few paces, make a halt. Then, this is the end of the exercise on fish. Remember which exercise starts and finishes with your seat. Then, of course, you are still on leash here. Then, on command from the judge, you continue a little more, take the leash off, turn around, and turn the group. This is your group of leash. Then, after, you will go to make all your pattern. Now, the way it is done now in Germany, which means here too, you have a group of a few people, let's say four or five people. It depends how much attendance we have at the trial. And you come here, you have finished your healing of fish. Those people are moving, let's say, in this direction, walking at a normal pace, not too fast. And you will come here. Up. See, I blow a few points here. <laughs> you go here, you make a turn. Then you can take off. Where do you sit? Where do you stop? Somewhere in between two people over there. One, your your one, choice. One. Yeah, it is one seat, except for shoots and three, it is two seats. Okay. So you make your seat, you know, wherever you want around that. Of course, use your brain again. Do not sit your dog in front here, in front of your son moving that way, because he's going to bump in the dog. Those are little details, but you have to think about it sometimes. Where do you take the lead off? Okay, here is where the healing on the You exit here, you make a stop, end of exercise. You start again, one, two, three, passes, just enough to take your leash off, make another turn, and enter the group of fish. No, no, no. You make a stop before which signals end of the exercise healing on leash. Then on signal from the judge, you are going to start healing of leash. The healing of leash starts with you walking one, two or three paces, whatever, taking the leash off while walking, making of course an about turn to come in the go. And here you go. Yes. That, that is not really in a book. <coughs> no. I don't know. So it's the same for one, two, and three as far as this. Yes. Well, the difference there is, is that you simply you heal of fish only. No, Shunsan one is first on fish, second off fish. Same for Shunsan three. Shunsan three, you enter the field of fish only. Okay. Shunsan two, is that one step two? One step. Okay. You are permitted.
permitted to give a command to your dog. Uh, we are talking about the healing pattern. Every time you change pace, how do you start? Okay, you are not permitted to give a command when you make a turn. Uh, when you turn, your turn must be normal. Uh, you are not permitted, of course, those extra, extra helps, like you have people making a very sharp turn or raising the leg like this. Of course, at times, if it's done a little not too obvious, you know, you might get away with it, you know, but uh, the idea is not to get caught. <laughs> but because this is considered a signal, really, it is a signal. It's like a double trauma. Must you The leash must be held in the left hand on the rule say that you must walk in a natural manner. A natural manner would be to swing your arms. You don't have to make them very extensively, but you could you cannot have like uh, by the way that rule is the same for AKC as far as I know. But you still see many people walking like this. To me that is not a natural way of walking because you do not do that in the street. So here comes as well. When you have completed your all clean healing, when you come out of the group, do you stop as you used to do, or do you go right into your all clean healing pattern on the field? After you have completed the group part of leash, you go straight, you do not stop at this time, you go straight to make your healing of leash pattern, because you will have two gunshots, which we want to give when the dog is healing, we want to see his reaction. I know there has been a lot of controversy over the years about how many seats, when do we sit, when we don't sit, to a point at a time when it was very uh, confusing. So one day I got mad, and I loved the uh, chief of trial of judges from West Germany in the corner, and I said I want it now, and I want it in writing. Okay, but those, those really are minor points. But still, you know, it's good. You feel more confident if you know exactly what to do. Okay. You just start. Uh, you want to start from the... No. Oh, is, is the start? Yeah, please start. You okay. This, you can turn the light off? Yeah. This one? Okay. Okay, this is a shoot sentry which means he's sitting directly off leash. There is no leash, otherwise it would be the same. But the pattern is the same. Uh, this handler, of course, uh, the pattern is done. You don't receive command from the judge to say left and right turn. You do it on your own. Which is a help because it permits you to work at your best advantage. You, might work with, you may work with the dog, you know, as a team. This is the fast portion for 10 to 15 paces. No more. Slow. So you can see the arm swinging. You do. Can I see short slow? short slow. You only do that five paces. Well, normally it should be a little longer. But. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that if the dog performs well, extremely well, like that dog has been doing, the judge realizes that the dog would do well anyway if you were making 15 paces. If you have a sloppy dog, yes, you would like to see more to make sure he's better. But it should be longer than this, yes. Okay, you're going to start well, uh, let's just say that this is an uh, extremely uh, knowledgeable handler and he's taking advantage as much as he can uh, to let this dog. Oh yes, well, something it depends how obvious you make it. See here, okay, here that was really obvious here. Uh, you know, so that is not a perfect about them. 
Right? Yes, it will be. This will be petting your dog during exercise. Okay. Okay, there was a little thing here where you could not see it went too fast. So it's a little help here. But uh, we will see that tomorrow when we judge the dog and we will comment on those things. <laughs> Mainly it is the procedure of what we want to see. So you have to remember, you cannot pet. Can you cut a signal? Cut it. Stop. Okay. Uh, I just would like to make an observation right now when I'm thinking of it. Is that each exercise starts and finishes in the sit position, in the basic healing position. Now that seems simple enough. So for some reason, I think 50% of the persons blow it up. Because you have a second rule that says that you cannot pet your dog during an exercise. If you are ready to start an exercise, you come sit position, you pet your dog, good boy. If this seat was part of the exercise and you did pet your dog during the exercise, it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> so what you do, you pet your dog before between exercise, it is permitted. So what you do, let's say, you make a seat, you know, you finish exercise, you pet your dog and you are ready to start. And if you have a person like me who has a tendency to give a lot of praise to the dog, uh, it might happen that you say good boy again. Ah, you realize it. It's faulty. But no, nothing is lost. Just take another two paces. Here, sit and start from here. You have saved the situation. Okay? If I were taking one or two points every time you touch your dog, yeah. you would never get a shift at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't take every dog, right? No. No, but same thing. When you go in competition, every half point counts. Don't fool around. Every half point might help you. And will help you. Either to get a trophy or to pass, depending on the you know, the ability of your dog. So don't waste anything else. I was just trying to figure out how many I lost at the game, but you know. That must be the seat out of motion. Which uh, the rule states normally 10 paces you heal and sit for 10 paces, then you continue walking. You are not permitted to look at your dog or give an extra help with your hands in no, etc. Like I said, the rule we said 10 paces, it is approximately 10 paces. We want to make sure the dog heal with you normally first. Isn't it better if you're, if you're risky to, to do 12 or 13 rather than to do less? I mean, no, it is, it is smarter to do 12, yes. But like I said, if you make one point, one more or less, most judges will not condemn. I have seen some people who counted the paces, so. But it is always better, personally, in training, I make 12 to 14 paces. So when I hear if I feel the dog is a bit low, I'm going to stop at 10. Like for example, the dog that has a tendency to anticipate. That was a Dana Tomashan. For the shoots and tree, you must heal, walk 10 paces, roll 10 paces, down the dog, roll. Uh, this was the old rule, which means until last year, when the dog go in, the handler goes in hiding for one minute. This is not true any longer. You do not go in hiding anymore. No. You stay over there on site. Uh, well, I do not know, but uh, for me that was a waste of time. Because if you have a shoot some tree that can stay 20 or 30 minutes down when the owner is out of range, what is the use to have it for one minute here? So that was just slowing down the judging process. Especially a judge uh, when a dog is on a sit state or a dance state. 
Uh, after about 10, 15 seconds, you can tell, as you know, as well as I do, if a dog is, is fidgety enough to move or if he's going to stay. Recall. The hand must not move. Let's see where the dog oh, is going down. down. Is that, are you going to take a point off of that? Sorry, I was too. Same question. Yeah, the uh, controllers. Okay, okay, like I said, I was looking at the picture, looking at you, I did that, you know, uh, oh, if the dog slow down, uh, you know, soon enough, yes, he will lose, you know, unless he's in the last two, three paces on a very fast dog, which needs that, you know, they order to touch the decoy, yeah. the handler. This is a stand out of walk, same thing. The other cannot look at his dog, I'll give his command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as you know, in your books, they always tell you how many paces you must be away from the dog. This is approximate, of course. But rule of thumb, always go farther. So you don't have you do not have to worry to know and be knocked down just because you are too close to the dog. Those are points really wasted because if your dog can stay when he's away 20, 20 paces from you, he can stay if he's 30 paces from you. Might have been just one more lesson for you to give. The, the normal, if we want to be finicky on, the, on those things, uh, I would say that the normal pace is about three to a meter, which is almost three to a yard. Uh, when they say pace, you, you take little steps all day long. Yeah, but you must, that's what I say, you must be walking normally, which is about, about three to a yard, you know, a normal pace. Uh, you can, you can put those down there. Listen, if you walk, if you walk, make your 20 paces, 25 paces like this, believe me, you are going to be knocked down. I see the whole picture, how far you are. Yes. Uh, can you only give up the second here? Stop. Stop. Okay, the, the dumbbell here. We have some interesting things here. The rule says that for shoots on two and three, it is a dumbbell belonging to the club. What they really mean is that it must be a strange dumbbell, a dumbbell strange to the dog. An article that the dog is not familiar with. This is the only reason why we are not permitted to use yours. Of course, a dog that has his own little dumbbell all the time, he knows it, he has, unless he has been trained for it, he has a better tendency to pick up the dumbbell than something he doesn't know, and which might have a different size. So keeping that in mind, that the dumbbell the dog is sent to retrieve is a strange dumbbell. If you put the, dog, the dumbbell in the dog mouth before you send it, this is not a strange dumbbell anymore. Consequently, you have to respond. If you put the dumbbell in the dog mouth before, yes. Yes, you can, because of course you have to grab it somewhere, so the judge is not going to say, oh, you have been touching this better than that. No, but you see the idea, it's supposed to be a strange dumbbell. If the dog fool around with it before, it's not a strange dumbbell anymore. Yeah, or what? On shoes and one, a dumbbell is not required, it's a dumbbell or a personal article. Yes, but you said when you are permitted, if you use the when you are permitted to bring your own anyway. So, should send one for everything. No, two is a dumbbell from the judge. Oh, I was not the judge, I was the hunter. You have, for the jump, the grass was very tall. And they had cut one side 
of the jump to make a very short grass. The first time I came, didn't have much brain. <laughs> Saint go to sit with his dog, I mean, still the dog, on the short grass. Throw the dumbbell over the wall, where the grass was still like this, and say, bring, or whatever word they used. Well, the dog had a problem finding that dumbbell in the grass. Right? Next time I came, everybody came, did the same thing. Because one person did it, and everybody but me when I came, everybody was insecure enough not to dare to do something else. When I went there, I saw that, that I, unless the judge tell you I want you to be here, and he would have a very specific reason to tell you, otherwise he doesn't care. I saw that patch, I saw over there, no, I went there, oh my God. I just went with my dog in the tall grass, I threw my dumbbell in the short grass, dog went me perfectly, bing, I had an edge on everybody already. And people don't do it because people are insecure. If they say, oh, if that person did it, it must be the way it should be done. Yes, uh, people are tendency to imitate. So know your rule, be confident in yourself. If you have something you are not sure, if you can do it at the trial. You know, let's say, like this example of the jump. Don't be shy, ask the judge, can I go over there? He will tell you yes, or if he does not, he will tell you do what you want. The, the point of the exercise is to check if the dog can retrieve over a jump without crossing the jump. No, you don't have to. But I mean, if you feel you are not sure if you will be making a penalty mistake in some exercise. As a judge, uh, one thing I would like to recommend also to handlers is that they, the day of the trial, they are so nervous, they have a tendency to change their training habits. Uh, for example, the, they train and they are so many feet from the jump or the scaling wall, the day of the trial, they are much harder or much closer. This is wrong. The dog is a creature of habits. He has a tendency to calculate the angle for the jump and he's going to jump one eight of an inch above or no more. The day you change your angle, I mean the distance, you ask the dog to change his angle. You have a very good chance he's going to touch that wall. Yeah. In fact, a good way to do it, and I'm sure many of you do it, is that the jump in trial is 39 inches, I always train on 42. So even if by accident I'm not at about the same distance I usually train, there is still such a margin that I have no problem. Okay, and like I say, on the scanning wall, you can use the article of your choice. If you feel confident with your dog, he scale well or that, you want to use the dumbbell, fine. But remember, it is your choice. Especially a dog which has a problem of weight or speed, to be able to jump properly, my have a tendency not to scale down like a cat and has a tendency to jump from the top. Now the danger with a dumbbell is that the dog hit from the top and boom. When you have the dumbbell between the teeth, it hurts. It's a bad souvenir. If you use a personal article, it will be like a gloves rolled together, you know, something like that. This is soft. The dog does not get hurt. This is why personal aid should set through the tree over the scaling wall. I always use personal article, so. Hmm? Over, over the scaling wall, you mean? No, but this is why I use... Okay, but that's a good question here. If you have a light glow, you cannot throw it away, especially if you have some wind. But what I do, I use two leather gloves. Uh, if it's not heavy enough, what I do, I put a piece of wood in it. But I mean, uh, pure towel, yes. Then uh, over it, I put an old sock, 
white socks, which means I have a white color, which is easier for the dog to find. Then I just put rubber bands around it, and that's heavy enough. Yes, this is personal if it belongs to you. That's fine. Sure. Oh, no, I do we have a lot of... Okay, so, uh, oh, excuse me. On the retrieval of a plant, does it matter how the dog approaches the dumbbell and picks it up? I mean, if he goes around it or if he goes straight to it and picks it up? No, he doesn't. What counts is that the dog go at the fast pace, pick it up without hesitation, bring back at the fast pace. They pick it up from front or from behind, it doesn't matter. It's the speed that comes, the determination. You want the dog to pull around or to sleep on his way, going or coming back. So it is the, the spirit, you know, the, the exercise. Alright, so uh, let's go to protection here. Would you like to take one protection? Yes, please. Fish. When you enter the field, under search. Now, very important under search. You can be, in the, you must stay in the middle all the time. It doesn't mean that you cannot make, let's say, one or two paces to the left or one or two paces to the right to show your dog the direction. But you must stay in the middle. You cannot go the line. And also, one misconception is that we call that search, but the exact translation would be quartering, which means basically you can consider to have one point per blind search. But if your dog search two blinds in a row on the same side, this is not quartering, so you cannot get two points. Okay, the dog is mousing here. I've not been looking at it uh, every second of it, so I cannot say if... Okay, I would consider this a bite. Okay, can you, can you stop a second? Okay, uh, that search here, where we see many mistakes. Like I said, the exact translation would not be searched at quartering which means the dog must go from here to there, to there, and there. If you're basically, for the judging, you can consider one point per blind, right? You have five points for the exercise. But if your dog go from one blind to the left, to the next blind to the left, this is not quite a range. You do not get two points because it is two blinds. The dog has to go across. If you have a problem, your dog went too fast and missed a blind, and he has not reached a new point, he has not... If he has not reached a new point yet, you can always bring him back, or make him search another blind on the other side backwards. That's one of the little tricks, but it is permitted. So I will do that unless your dog is not in perfect physical condition and you realize he's getting tired of running. In that case, you might be better off losing one point but keeping his breath from a nice part to get the blind. Mike, if you can dodge this line and then you can set him over this line and he wouldn't go to that blind. And then you went to the fourth line and you did that line twice, that doesn't count. If you missed the blind, you missed the blind, right? Is that one point off? In other words, if I went, I missed one, but I did two, and then I did three, and then I did four twice. Well, you, if you make, you cannot make four twice in a row, no. But let's say your dog make one, skip, uh, goes uh, to three, does four, you can bring him back or bring him back to two. You know, yes, that would be permissible. Yes, you can use the dog name for that. 
on the uh, on the side of the dock. How many commands can you give it? Can you say we're bearing more than one? Command? You mean in a further search? Yes. Yes, uh, the double command, uh, like in obedience, when we say 20% uh, of the points for double command, does not apply to protection. So you can say it like one. Yeah, in the search, yes, you can give him more than one command, yes. Can you, say, uh, can you say back, and then can you say find it, if you have more around it, or is that a double command? Can you say a lot of different things? Or yeah. Do you Are you committed to one word when you start using that word? No. No, so you can get the dog search, find it. You know, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, the idea is for the dog to find if there is a suspect. You know, always keep, or at least personally, that's how I do it. I always keep in mind the purpose of the exercise. You know, rather than a, a, a show or a perfect letter, I turn on that. My goal to me when I set up the search is to find if there is a potential criminal hidden somewhere. And that's what really counts. But the dog must be must do it on his own, which means he must go search. I cannot go with him. If you go with him, it's like me having a guy with a, a revolver waiting for me, and I have to go with my police dog to search. That would be stupid. Right? But if I have to tell him two, three times to go, so what? As long as he does the job. Uh, man out the dog, don't you put must use out the No. What? You, you can't say down. If you tell down to your dog, go out. But if he downs, it's fine. If he doesn't, if he outs and doesn't down, you are in trouble. <laughs> because the dog disobeys you. Uh, as a matter of fact, you told him down, right? He did a down. No. You and you have your six blinds. Three to my left, three to my right, or four on each, depending on the club. The judge will tell you, go over there to start. You will have the decoy, of course, which is not mandatory in the world, by the way, especially if you have eight blinds. But usually, the decoy will be at the last blind. First of all, that's one thing here. You will know, as a handler, you will know where the decoy is, right? Or you will look. There is no penalty for you knowing. One very important thing, you go with your dog at the start. Which blind do you start first, left or right? Fast, fast, fast. You don't have time, the judge is telling you move. The decoy is over there. He's on the left, you start the left. He's over there on the left. No. You start the opposite. Always in diagonal. The decoy is on the last blind to the left. You start your dog to the first blind to the right. So that you can go quartering and you have all your number of blinds. The second, but something you must know before. If you start to come, then you might as well do this, that, not that doesn't work. Okay? Always the opposite. The decoy is on the right. Start on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yes, but I'm, co I'm coming to that. Okay, so I have my, my blinds here. I come with my dog. Let's say the decoy is to the left. I want to start to the right. I am in the middle, facing the middle. You know, I'm in the middle. I am going to turn, which I don't have to do. You can send your dog, say, find it. But if you want to give a little extra help to your dog, remember you have to stay in the middle, but it's not at the inch. You know, you turn your dog a little bit, keep, fine. The dog come back, you can stay in the same spot, or move. You must be moving, but you can be moving very slowly. Yeah, come, 
find it. Then, when the dog is at the second plank, and this is when people make a terrible mistake, incidentally, the search is even at the German Meisterschaft. This is what decides between the winners and the losers, the one who make a perfect search. This is where you see it. So, when the dog has made plan one, plan two, many people stay here, the dog comes back, and they say, find it. You have plan three and four. The dog, first of all, doesn't really know what you mean. If I show you, I ask you, go to the blind over there, and you have two blinds, you will ask me which one. But the dog cannot ask, you want him to move. So, after, when the dog is going to the blind too, and you know where you go, we start it. You start to move. Call the dog back, and you are very close to the third line. You know, of course, in the middle. Find it. So it is clear what it has to be. Besides, you will be closer to your dog, and the closer you are to your dog, especially the more control you have. So you make your blind four. And of course, for the last two blinds, you cannot go too close. You have to stay at about 25 paces, which means usually roughly, you know, about in between the middle blind, blind two and three. But it's all right because you have only two blinds left. So if really you send your dog, you know, here, he sees only one blind, so he will go there. On that term, he has found nobody, so it's easy just to steer him to the left. But do not stay at between plan one and two when you want your dog to work at three and four. Go. If so you are permitted to walk, you are not permitted to run. So this is just a matter of timing. Manage to be in a natural manner at the exact spot where you want to be when you want to work your dog. And it helps. Okay, now, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, I started on the first post. Start the line. He never lied, but he turned. Well, the dog came, turned, and faced the first line, and that's when he started from that position. Is that him? I don't know. Well, you are supposed to start facing the middle, but the dog looking down. No, you have the plan on inside. The dog must face the middle line. Then you say him. And you can do this, yes. But see, but this is very minor. You know, if you have a, a normal 100 point dog, and we have championship, and you have two other dogs, 100 point dog, yes, and that's the only mistake made, yes, you will lose because of that. Uh, no. You know, because if your dog search, we'll see it after a while. If he needs you to be exactly here, he won't be able to make a perfect search anywhere. Yes? We are looking for shoot and run. Directly to the blind. Directly to the blind. The rule says that your dog must be, uh, must have the opportunity to check more than one blind. But there is no point for search in shoots and one. So why waste our time? He, can, he cannot get anything anyway. They might, they might do it, but they cannot take any points off if your dog does not go. So what do you use? We have enough work in our shoots and fly of these hotel in this power. If the dog cannot go to search when you send him, that would be for me. Okay, this is the kind of things that are not put in the book, so that would be the judge to make his own evaluation on this side. Uh, so each judge might uh, do it the way he wants. Personally, I would see it depending on how the dog works. 
From the way they don't work, I will know if it's a hand or mistake or a dumb mistake. Okay, so, do you want to finish that? That's been very short, no? Okay, the dog has been barking at the blind. One command from the judge. The hand dog come back at least four paces. And pull his dog back to him. You cannot pick up your dog except for shoot and run. Okay, here very important where you place your dog. Can you stop and still frame? Uh, he said there's something wrong with the unit, so I, every, every Okay, very important here. Some people place their dogs in any possible position. You have the decoy here, uh, they put their dogs over there, 10 feet away, 15 feet away. Uh, that poor dog has a lot of trouble to catch it. A good dog at the extreme at the escape is the dog that is going to fly and bump. The faster and the harder they stop that man, the better it is. If for some reason, because he was not positioned properly, the guy can uh, run 40 paces before he can be stopped, that's not good. You make your own dog look bad. Put him close, you know, uh, not touching the guy of course, but close. And if you use your brain, even if you have the first dog on the field, you must have an idea where that guy is going to escape. Usually it doesn't have much choice. So if you must escape, you know, let's say from this wall to this wall, uh, you would be standing here. I would put my dog here. On a little bit on the side. And this is the, the decoy facing this way. The same is here. So as soon as I start to take off, my dog jumps, boom, get him. If you have your dog over there, he has to catch up with him. Take some care. If the guy has to escape over there, how can you do it? He will have to go for the arm which doesn't have a sleep, which could be dangerous. But if the dog go for the sleep and he has to turn, you know, you look for trouble. Put him as close as you can. So he make a stop quick and fast. Okay, go on. <laughs> No, the, the, the escape, then the reattack. I'll see if I can run it back with The dog gets hit twice. The dog must let go of one command. command. By the way, the rule doesn't say one command, the rule says what command is permitted. Which means the dog is permitted to let go as long as he doesn't let go before the decoy stops moving. So the staff that you can give the command. But the command is not necessary, the command is not required. Okay. Okay. Now the back transport here. The dog must be under control. You know, a dog that wants a teeny bit can close the eyes, but the dog that wants is too much or get out of control. See, that dog has the tendency to be on that day a little bit too far. Must let go of that command and be guarding by watching the decoy under the handler. Going up in Chicago. Why are you doing that? Yes, they do. If that dog back that needs a handle, that's, a, that's an advantage to the handle. Put it out. Oh, and then every dog would be back right off. So the handle almost. If the idea that dog is closed up to the other, yes, it's right. Mm -hmm. If you said out and the dog didn't, and did out, if you phrase it as a good boy, no, after the dog has out? Well, sure, you can, you can say good boy. Yes. Good. Well, no, from the distance, no, you cannot. Why? Because the dog is, so, is, in a, is working when you say that. He's in the middle of the exercise, which is after you out, the exercise that starts is guarding. 
So you will be present during a major surgery and uh, Of course, if you are close to your dog, you know, the judge is told the other way, you know, they say to boy. The judge won't hear it, but watch out. If he catch you, you know, the same thing that will be my dog. Crash test. Now hold your dog at the crash test before you send the dog. Pretty much. I see too many people just watching the take on your runaway. But yeah, but just it wouldn't it's a false piece, you gotta hold the dog, I mean you can't You don't have to hold your dog. You can't so much more pressure to do dog you can control without being held jumping up and down trying to stack out the collar, you know. Yes, but for many dogs that give them more fighting spirit and defense. But you don't have to. No, you don't have to. You can you can keep him off leash, fine. But the day he goes, he anticipates him. He goes before I tell you. Then you need help. For those exercises, especially courage test, do not send your dog before the judge tells you. He wanted to show us how the dog was guarding so long, so well. <laughs> I was just told that since this is a two-hour tape, the special effects don't work. I wasn't aware of that. This is the new machine to us. Okay, then this is a transport to the judge. Now, see where the dog is here? Okay. And normally, and especially for the beginners, it is the dog is supposed to be watching while you were watching the decoy. And you can help your dog here too, by having the dog heal. But if you will tiny bit behind the decoy, if you want, you can even grab him at the jacket here and make him heal like this. The dog will be right here, he said will be right at the decoy time. He will look better than many dogs, which if you are at this level, will have a tendency to go around and forget that they were supposed to go. You want to run up for the boys? Okay, this is a search. You notice the dog went to the blind, but he didn't go on the way to it. Uh, but there is one thing, really. Uh, Yes, but the rules same thing. The rules say, you know, uh, search for fun. And you will find many dogs, especially if you have some wind. They do not have to go behind that blind to know against someone. They have a nose. So to me, a dog that comes close and make a turn like two, three feet before, and come back and go to the next, to me, it is coming. Three lines on the same side of the field, but she didn't come this side of the field at all, so how many points did she lose? Why? Well, she made only uh, the first line counted. She hasn't gone the other, and she lose the other, yeah. But they have to go in order. Not necessarily in order, but they have to go across. <laughs> well, che checking the judge or... Uh, the gold, whatever, you know, it, it's all right. I don't know who that dog is. I don't know, you know that dog? Is he a dog by any chance that has been trained by you looking for food? No, I don't. Hmm? I think the dog has been trained very much at all. Well, I have not seen that. <laughs> Her all in the 
You know, same thing. If I if I had been on the field on that closer, I would have been able to see if that dog had been just nibbling or a real bite. Here it's difficult to say. Uh, but it is definitely 40 anyway. Yes. Well, he would lose, he would lose more than anything too. Even if the judge didn't consider this as biting, he would What dog is that, Tom? Do you know? Is that Dino? It's on box. Yeah, it's Dino. This is the one I had on that other day. Yeah. Performance. Like that. I know. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, this dog, very good, it but sure is. Uh, uh, he's not perfect. He's that. He's not uh, like here. He's looking at the hand. Uh, yes. Uh, see, the the from the behavior of the dog here, I can tell you that the hand there has a cold with his dog. He has a way to make him back and come in. It's obvious. No, you bet. I don't know the dog, but I'm sure. Oops. <laughs> well, he reminds me of Fred Astor. You know Fred Astor? <laughs> Again, the, the dog is barking at the under, not a not a decoy. This is not a garden. I did. Did you do good? How about Peter? You can see it again here. I'm never rejudging in this trial. I thought it'd be Okay, same thing again. See, he's watching the end there. Oh, I have no doubt that if the decoy was moving, the dog would die. Don't stop it, definitely. <laughs> but there is no intensity that is not guarding. Because same thing, looking for a, a, from a realistic point of view, if I were the bad guy here, I would have a revolver, I would just go slowly. Uh, boom. Okay. No, that was a very good performance, but it is not excellent performance. There was lack of intensity, but in the high level. Okay, so I think you want to take a rest here, and we can stop here. If you have one or two questions before we start, I think that if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them other than I just want to thank you very much for giving me your time.
I can't tell you. It could have been a hole in the ground. Oh, <laughs> 
just lays your eggs. And it's like this baby can be just a baby. It's on the face. 72 years old? Yeah, it's old.
Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Go this way. Right there. And you take the knee shot on the this way. The run is there. Go from the left side of it. to is that dogs probably could be given the benefit of the doubt from their sense of smell, but the rules state they're supposed to at least look in. Process. They always figure that the dog is going to be a prey 
lean to a better out later. And the aggression and the motivation is there now. You can't out your dog when you're a third or a, num a number three, then that, that gets a little bit worse. <laughs> He's been working on my dog for five years old. He was crazy. He's been working on my dog for five years old. He's Realize what the judge has to go through. You judge only two dogs, which means two in obedience to protection, let's say four. The same day the judge has to do 30, 10 in tracking, 10 in obedience, 10 in protection. And you don't have time to add your scars like you did. It's right at the spot. So, uh, we can look later on maybe at that. Let's look at the scores first. Why? Because this camera gave you a different angle. It is quite possible that from that angle we see things that we could not see from where we were. On the other hand, there are things that we might not see here. So it is a little bit misleading. Uh, and it's a good point to po uh, good thing to point out here that that video is excellent to see your mistakes, to see what happened, to study. But it's very easy to judge when you are in a armchair like this, especially if you can repeat, have instant replay or slow motion. So when you do it at time, just remember that the judge cannot see all that. Doctor, what would you want to just? play along while you're talking. I can work it and keep up with your talking just as a visual reference. Okay, or well, we can look after if uh, after I tell people what I have seen so they can see what they have missed. That's you know, don't you think so? Yeah. They will okay. see better because that will turn too fast. Okay. Well, I can stop it though. Okay. The <coughs> obedience, the first dog was hot shot. Okay, in obedience, okay, I'm going to tell you right away, I gave him 90 points. So you can see you have some people that are much tougher than I am. This is uh, the first column here. One dog, well, someone gave a 95, and the lowest is 79 on the By the way, you cannot give 79 on the You can use your score sheet to deduct that points if you want. But which means, when you announce the score, this would be 80. All right. Okay. Heel on leash. For a total points, maximum points of 15. What did you give? Announce score. 14. 14. 14. 12. 12. <laughs> okay, that's good. I give 13 points. What did you see wrong in that in that dog in healing on the Lagging on the path. Lagging on the past, this is correct. Start off and change stand to believe. <laughs> it is yes, it is correct. Well you can't every start that you have it is true, you are supposed to have your leash in the left hand. Um, a crooked seat. A lot of forging? Did you think so? I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, I tell you what. I will, I will tell you what I saw. And if you have something special, you think you saw, and you wonder why I don't, didn't take points off, I will tell you. Uh, believe me, I do not say that I never miss anything. You see how easy it is, how fast it goes. But we just try to do our best. Okay, unnatural hand position. The handler walk with his hand here. The dog must, the handler must move with his hand in the right, in the natural position. Why? For that different reason, it's just we want, we want it to be natural. 
First, a judge can always assume, because remember a judge is or has been a training director and he is a handler. There would be a nice little trick to do, is to have hand food in your hand. Here, then you will have the dog watching you all the time. Right? Uh, we don't want that. <laughs> the dog was slow in the fast, this is correct. Uh, there has been at least one time a good jerk on the dog. This is a trial, this is not a training session. Uh, on the last turn, in fact, when the dog made the last turn to come back, uh, the dog was slow. There was a little bit of lagging in the last turn. And there was a crooked seat. Okay. Now the trick is that you have the, your book, which is the same I use, which can tell you oh, so many points for this and this and that. But you have to see the overall attitude of the dog. Total points, 15 points. If you give 15 points, it's perfection. 14 points would be at least a excellent. Uh, and you can go down like this up to remember 70% is what you need to pass for the whole thing. Consequently, we could say 70% is satisfactory. 70% out of 15 points that would make 10 and half points. And that dog was much better than that. Uh, for his overall performance in English, I gave him 13 points. Heal of fish. How many points did you give here? 17. What else do we have? 19 and a half. 19. Okay, 19 and a half. 19, all that, that means excellent. 12. Uh, that was very good, but that was not that excellent. The, I don't know if you noticed when the guy, the, sorry, the handler, <laughs> Left the group on leash, he's supposed to take the leash off while healing. And he stopped, and he started to take it off. She says, yeah, that's an honor. How many points? So it cannot be perfect. No, no command. Yes. <laughs> then there was one more important thing. During the dealing in the group, the handler must show you a turn with his dog on the inside. Yes. And he must show you the dog with reading on the outside. And that is the difficult part. That is when most dogs like. And the fellow went fast and took over. And he didn't do that thing outside. So he didn't do what is required. Right? So he cannot get points for what he didn't do. Besides, you have many handlers or more experience, who are not going to do it if they know their dog is going to look bad, hoping that if they go fast enough, the judge is going to miss it. Still, the performance, I would say, was excellent. You know, excellent healer. I gave him 18 points for that. <coughs> Sit out of motion for a total of 10 points. What did you give? Nine. Nine. Okay, it was very good again, but it was not perfect. The dog was very slow to sit, so I gave him nine points. The dog sit and stay, you know, no problem. Incidentally, incidentally, suppose the dog will have down. The total point for the exercise is ten points. How much you give? It's a sit out of motion for a total of 10 points. Five. The dog downs when it takes to sit. Five. Good, you are right. It's 5 points for sitting and 5 points for staying. Down and recall. Okay, I gave 7 and a half. I gave 5. <laughs> You get five. Yeah. One more line. Yeah. Okay. What what happened? What did you see here? What did the dog? Oh, the other did wrong. 
the one comment, that's yeah. correct. So I gave five for doing it, but I figured if you missed the first time, it didn't count, so I only gave five for doing one part of it. Okay. What do you get for the second? We have 20% off. The double command is 20% of the points for this exercise. So, what? Well, Alright, so the total points possible are 10 points. Double command is 25 is 20%. So how much do you take off for that? How many points do you take off for that double command? Oh. The second time you call, use the name also, like a double, double command. Okay, okay, wait, I'm not so fast. Okay. Okay, so the man, he used a double command to have his dot down. He took 20%, he took two points, I say it's wrong. No. Two out of ten is 20%, I agree. But it's, the exercise is not down on command, it is down on record. You have five points for downing on command, five points for the recall. Which means twenty percent of five is one point. Okay, what else did we have? Okay, double command to down. What else did you see? The dog was slow to down. And also he was slow to come. Right? Two commands. I thought it was good. Yeah, two commands down, two commands up. That is true. Okay, but remember, whatever you deducted, the performance of the dog, 70%, which would mean 7 points for that exercise, would be satisfactory. No more, no less. Still enough to pass. Uh, he was a little bit better than that. I gave him 7 and a half points, which means I took 2 and a half points off, which is very close to what you have. Okay, retrieve of the on the flat. Okay, I gave him eight and a half. What did you see? The dog is is it meant to pick up? Yes. Could be coming faster. Yes. No, there is one little thing you miss here. You took the dumbbell right out of the right after the set. No. No. You are, con you are confusing with the other hand up here. Oh, alright. Well, I didn't judge, I just tried to recall it. No, the dog came and touched the hand up. Huh? Yes. He touched the hand up. Oh. Now that's his mind up, but he's not supposed to touch him. Especially he has a big dumbbell in his mouth, you know, he can't touch him. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I'll think like that, yes, I will say that. Okay, so, it on the flat, I gave him a... Uh, eight and a half. Oh, by the way, the, I'm sorry here, the previous one, done and recall. Uh, it's, I think I made a mistake of what I told you. I gave him 7.5. Is that what I said? Okay, so here, eight and a half. Uh, read me over the jump. Okay, what did you see? What did he do wrong? Hmm? Okay, what I took, I took uh, half a point of for a pocket seat in front, which was, you know, that they could get. The pickup, it was not really slow. The dog was in that grass, the dog was trying to get it. It didn't show any situation like the other dog after. Okay, then we have the center wave. Okay, okay center wave is for a total of 10 points. What did you give? Nine. Seven. Seven. What was wrong? He started moving off center and he went beyond the point that I thought. 
he went, it is true, he went a little bit sideways, but not that much. Uh, I just took one point off, considering he could be going faster. You know, you cannot, excuse me? On his elbow, on his elbow. You know, you have to realize that the dog is not a machine either. The overall performance, I think, was very good. Uh, the total of 90 points corresponds to a very good. So you see, it fits. So we'll say you want some. Let's see. We, we'll try to find with the best judge of you all. Excuse me? I'm sorry, that's what you told to the, the under over there. You are not permitted to change your scoring at first. <laughs> <laughs> he might punch you in the nose and say you are stupid, but that's your problem. <laughs> okay, so I would say, okay, that one really get a plus here. It's very good. Excellent to be so close. That's an ID. I'll put mine here, I need. Uh, I would say 88, the spending clause is very good. This is very good. Uh, that judge here, I suggest the... Uh, I, I would like that one to be a judge, and I would put my dog on the ring, whoever that is. Uh, those people okay, here have had a tendency to be over critical, yeah. uh, which is a common mistake when you start studying for judging because you have to tendency to go just by the book and not trying to get the overall picture. Yeah. Okay, so since we are in obedience, let's continue the obedience here. Can I make a point here? Yes. Something I thought somebody would catch on. All the judges that were there, and I didn't realize that I had it until I was halfway through the exercise for the whole thing. I had a big puncture in my hip. Nobody caught it. It's full of liver. I never even knew it was there until I was halfway through. We can sure see it under your jacket. I'm not even sure the dog that was there, though. I thought somebody didn't give me that. As long as you don't have any food in it, it's fine. But if one day you will get caught with food on you at the trial, you can say goodbye to Schutzen. And I think everybody knows that, so really, is it worth Maybe the that you might have, uh, is it really worth it? So I don't think anybody would be stupid enough to really do it. But uh, if I had seen that, you know, I might have looked at it closely. Avoid to do it, that's all. When you are in a trial like that, by the way, avoid special thing in your pocket, like it happened to us at times without thinking about it, like a lot of change. And you really it goes clink, clink, clink. Uh, if the judge hears that, he might think you are giving, going to give, uh, you are giving a cue to your dog, and you might lose points. You might do it on purpose, but you might just do it because you didn't think about it. So be careful on those little things. Okay, the second dog was going to, for Schutzen 2. Of course, Schutzen 2 is. Uh, Intermediate level, so the dog is supposed to know more. And uh, where is that? This would be this would be the third column here. And the dog needs 70 points to pass. And we can see that everybody but one person passed the dog. I think the other can give a kiss to number 12. Give you 70 points, which should be enough to pass. Okay, let's check here. Eileen Hornish. How many points did you give here? Twelve. Twelve points. Congratulations, the maximum points is ten. She gave a bonus. Yeah. Yes. Two points in the brain. Seven minutes. Okay, so what did you find wrong here? <laughs> yes, the dog is slow, and the, to say it in one word, the dog, the handler adapts its pace to the dog. So that should be knocked down. 
This is satisfactory. You know, you can say a little bit more, between seven and eight and no more. Between seven, if you give seven and eight, it's okay. So you can give seven as well. Uh, this is should be two, remember, the points maximum is ten. Okay, heal or flesh for a total of 15 points. Yeah. <laughs> If you get 15 points, 70% satisfac satisfactory, everything else is not. Which means satisfactory is 10.5. You have to be careful if you put him, like if you give him only 50% of the points or less, that means you should tell that dog goodbye. You cannot continue, you have to lose him. And nobody came uh, to me to tell me I uh, issues that dog. So that means you have to be mocked, otherwise you should not stay here. Okay, what did he do? Double command. Yes, double command. Especially in the group. Lagging, slow seat, and wide. I gave, I gave that dog 10 points, which means barely 70%, half a point less to permit him to continue. Barely. Sit down of motion. Two. Three. What was wrong? Don't on his own. the down. That's a sit down of motion. Hmm? He said on his own, but he was smart, he didn't say that he didn't get going. I didn't see. Him. I didn't see that. I heard the handler say sit, that's all. So maybe I missed something, I don't know. No, he didn't say sit, but he was smart, he kept going. He didn't look either. When the handler says sit, it doesn't mean that you have to hear it. Right? He wasn't ready. Okay, I gave him his full points here. Oh. Down and recall. Okay, same thing. I say six, that means, you know, the dog fell. Okay, what? No. You mean if you try to hold your size, he could have, you ask if he could sit back? Yes, because every single. Okay, good question here. If the dog is so bad in office that you give him less than 50 percent, you have to excuse it. And there's a very good reason for that is because everything else behind is going to be hopeless. So if the dog cannot make uh, at least a uh, uh, very fair healing office, how can you make him bring him to, to jump, to retreat, to do this again? It's a waste of time. That doesn't apply to the sin motion be found, which is half wrong. No. Then you don't no, I'm talking about the healing of fish. Okay, Dan and Rico. Okay, what did you find wrong here? Oh, sir. What's that space? Why you can't call it the same thing? didn't do it. Correct. <laughs> okay, the dog made an automatic finish. Yeah. It is true. But he, did one, he made one more important mistake. Yeah. He didn't wait for the judge to tell him to call his dog. Uh, there are people who do that at the time, they know the dog cannot sit and stay. And we had a pretty good opinion on that when he was in a long down. So the other quickly called his dog to make him look good. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the dog did down, the dog came when he was called, make a bad finish, you know, an automatic finish here sitting for but still he had done and he came with cold. So it's still satisfactory, very. See right now he's in a, on the tight hole. Let's move over the fan. Out of 10, yes. 70%. Yeah, that's what you need, 70% out of 100 to pass, right? 
Okay, we see what we'll look back. Zero. Zero, right. You are mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give the word command. Yes, well, actually, has given one and two, it's considered the word command period. Because if you knock 20%, which will make two points every time the field. Now, you are telling me you have a guy who needed different command to call his dog uh, to make a retreat, different command. The dog over there, pick up the dumbbell, come back in front, give the dumbbell, finishes, and you give him zero, or if he had given six, you give him minus two. He did the job, but he gave the ball command. It is so you are supposed to tell it to say it once. But what you prefer? A dog that will do all that retrieving, all that when called, even on three commands, or a dog that will not do it? Because if you give zero to each of them, that means you consider them the same. A dog that can still do it, you know, is much better than a dog who doesn't know to do this exercise. Okay, so you went on, on that, uh, you know, overall book, very common at the beginning. General picture, it was not good, definitely not, you know, but it still makes his degree. A double command, the dog dropped the dumbbell, before that hesitated to pick up, it is no good. Still, I gave him several points. I was in my good days. See, I didn't have to give a degree today. Maybe that's why it influenced my judging. <laughs> okay, retrieve over the jump. Zero, five, ten, for a maximum points of 15. Here we have a lot of problem. Why? What happened here? What happened? The dog did hesitate to drop, drop the dumbbell, hesitate to pick up and drop the dumbbell. There was a finish. You have, see, that went too fast for you. It is at the scaling wall, it is not a finish. Anyway, I gave that dog 10 or 12 points with the same thing, just barely. Since I didn't see it then, I thought the dog came over, dropped the dumbbell, the handler picked it up then. That is, yeah, that, you are right, that is true. Yeah, you are correct. No yeah, there. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just keeping you straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, same, same thing here, 10.5, wow. which means barely, you know, class, but barely. You're going to pull special, aren't you? <laughs> you better play that. Okay, scaling over the wall. Zero, zero. Okay, that's a flat zero. The dog did not jump at all, so that's simple. Send away. Six, zero, seven, five. Okay, I gave him five points. The dog went, but he went too short. You know, that was not even acceptable the way he went. You know, Sai was on the side, like you were talking for the other one, but much more. It was not good. Long down. Zero. 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 Did anybody give anything else than zero? Yeah. Less than zero. Ha! Oh, did you see? I don't know. Oh, but that's not an issue. You know, I needed to scratch my head, too. <laughs> okay, so I gave him a total of 52 points, which I think was generous, but like I said, that was my good day today. <laughs> you know, there is one thing. Uh, when you have a dog that is at the limit to pass, you know, Ryo, it is very, very extremely important. Uh, the problem that you have, which if you are judges you will encounter, is that you have dogs that make so many mistakes for one exercise, if you want to really write down everything for the critics, you cannot see anything. You have to spend your time writing the whole page just for the exercise. So if the dog, you realize, is going to flank, or you have to make sure of that. You know, I mean, you have, the dog is going to flank, so 
Give the dog that is, is not good enough to pass, like if you have one or two points or even three points in defense, it doesn't make any importance really, the dog flag. The, the danger is that if you flag a dog that must pass or vice versa, you know, so that's really critical for the young man. I was curious about one thing on the retrieval of the flat again. Uh, what do you do in a case of when if you've got several commands being given? Like I think you gave, ended up giving three commands finally. Uh, you take 20% for the first. No, you take 20. You take 20% for the one command given. So you give five commands and you, and you only lose 20%. Yes. You, like I say, you, you cannot take more. If you have, if you have an exercise with 10 points and with ten, five commands, the dog is going to still do it. You know, he go over the jump, you think, well, that's a poor example, it's not the 10 point exercise. <laughs> so, but you have a dog like Ridley on the flat, he's going to go with different commands, but go pick up that, that dumbbell, come back, give it back, etc. And because you did not get 20% for each double command, you give him exactly the same as the dog that does not know to pick up, will just stay here, you know, or just watch you, that would not be fair. Yeah, well, that's right. That's so this is the idea. Uh, I know we judge quite different from other organizations, or like AKC, uh, you know, it's just uh, the way we are. So if you threw the dumbbell and the dog walks out there and you say brain and fooey and brain and get it and get over here and all that. That's right, as long as you don't move. Two points. Stand there. Yeah. What happens if you move? You're going to lose. What, what would happen if you move two steps towards it? Next try to finish No, no, that you cannot do at all. You lose more. How much? Because it's another red. It, it depends how much you take the dog. I would have to see. You know, you have the rule, but you have certain things the dog must analyze. What happened? How much help the dog did? Can okay, you say it's not as easy as it looks like? Yes, if you have to keep double commands at every exercise like that, you don't go on. You are not going to pass. It's not possible. It's made in a way that even the dog can only once, you are not going to pass, no. And that's, you know, that's why it's still okay. <laughs> Does not the exercise stop any time you move? Does not? If I move, if I move out of position, the exercise stops immediately. Is this not right? It depends what you call moving. Moving to me, this is the wall. Come. Come. I move two steps. The exercise is finished one. No. No. You know. If you come, go to the jump, for example, up, you are out. Because that's too much of a head, like if you move forward. But normally you should not move. You will get knocked severely. Yes. Okay, what, so what have we got here? Uh, okay, that dog was extremely difficult to judge because there were so many things that went wrong. Okay, so I'll be more generous here. Okay, uh, what did we get? Okay, that's very good. That's too hard. Uh, see, we have a lot of differences here. Yeah, I would say 59 is close enough. We're going to give a first point here. 1541. Ah, there's too much difference. Okay, but that one. Woo! Have you passed the Schutzan, uh, what was that, Schutzan 2? With that performance? Whoever is number 12? Admit it. You will ruin the Schutzan sport. <laughs> okay, but uh, like I said, that was extremely difficult, you know. Uh, when you have things like that, you know, there are things you cannot, you don't even have time to write in your book. So, don't even write because you spend all your time looking at the book and then another dog. Okay, protection. The Schutzen one was. Hot shot. Okay, so guard on back. For a total of five points. 
How many did you give him? You cannot get ten, the total is five. You gave five. What did you give? Five? What did you give? Five? Well, I deducted twenty percent, I gave him four. No, you didn't write? No. I take I took twenty percent of the points off because the hunter came to the dark. To close the dark. The hunter is supposed to stay over there on the dark as well on his own until told by the judge to come. He came on his own. The judge came at me, made a beautiful bark. He would have had full points. On my command, all the other have to do is to come pick up the dog. If the dog goes to the judge and barks, barks, barks there, you still... You told the dog, find a suspect. He found one. <laughs> you did not tell him by Jojo or uh, John. He found me. And he started here beautifully barking. You will have waited. He came. You had your point. Yes. We use blinds to hide a decoy. But the command is not find the mind in the blind, is it? Find it. Why well, find someone? And we have done that, what you did, that uh, <clears throat> I was mad at you. Not for me, for the cold dog. You told him fully. That means you did something wrong. What did he do? Oh, you sent him to find someone, he found me. And he was doing a catch up. So remember that one, we find it that time. So you lost one point here. Please. Is I'm not I'm not a mind reader. But it makes it makes sense to me. Okay. Then after that we had uh, we had the attack. Okay, we go for the attack on Adler here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the healing on leash and off leash. It's a total of 10 points, 5 on leash. On. Uh, okay, healing on leash for 5 points. What did you give? Okay, I gave 5 points. Okay. And to realize the dog knows what it is, the dog knows what it is coming. Uh, he must be under control definitely, but he's not that stupid, you know what it is coming. And you have to remember it's a shooter one, it's a beginner. Right? Healing of fish. Okay, here I gave him three points, which means I took two points off. Because then he was out of control. Then the elder had to give other comments to him back. <laughs> Attack on handler during transport. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, let's make it. Okay, let's make it all together here. The attacks. Well, it doesn't matter, right? I don't know how you 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 did it on your face. Did you have time to make everything separate? <laughs> I'm going to it fast. Okay, so I'll be nice with you. I'll put the... Let's put the old... Let's... Okay. Okay. Oh, that be bad. Okay, the attack on Adler, so... Hmm? You took five points off. Okay. What did you... Twenty, twenty-two. Twenty-two. What else do we have? Okay, say we are all pretty close between 22 and 24, I get 23. So good it good here. Okay. Why why did you take some points off by the way? He let go like of it and city, yes. He let go a little bit fast. Too quick as well as the other, which means his mind was not really to it. But which go same thing, you know, it's not a full bite, you know, this kind of thing. We all go together, really. It's the same frame of mind. Okay. 
uh, the book street twenty what is okay this I counted it you know with the courage test so why don't you put both together I give you one more chance <laughs> and add your last two scores together okay so it's a total of 60 points well, we have a little problem here. You give 54 out of 60 when you add those two uh, things, which means the set after the decoy divide, you know, on the house that. Well, out of 60, I'm just marking my minuses here. That means 60 and 60. I mean, I gave him 45. Yeah. What did the dog do? That's right. He bites, he bites on that goal. You give 55, that means excellent. Now a dog that bites on that goal? I don't know. The dog did attack the intensity. The dog was not hanging there. Oh, he came. Okay, that was nice. But, you know. Did I get his vitamins today? No, no, no. There is no ten point courage anymore. Uh -huh. No. So the post but the problem is the post you can't get only the post but in that post it's also the first bite that comes that goes up to that time. And when the dog hit, he bite, but it was not a full mouth, it was not a good bite. So I took him, you know, three points off of that. You know, then after, uh, with the other, the, the dog working, you know, then you could see the dog witness. So I took him 12 points, uh, which considering that it is a Schutzen one, which means a beginner dog, would still pass him with a total of 80 points, which is very passive. <laughs> Beware, uh, for courage and hardness, at this time I would give him a B. Uh, if we were using the old system, I would have given a 7. Uh, the dog has the... You know, there is the little thing which I'm happy they have taken the points of because they didn't feel too much. It is that they have put courage and hardness together. And uh, that's something that bothered me. Because to me, courage, the dog has courage or doesn't have it. Period. Now the hardness. This is going to change from day to day. If your dog has colitis or you have traveled 1200 miles, or his time, or whatever. That changes from day to day, let's face it. Yeah, it's like you, your mood to, to go into a fight will change from day to day. But the courage is there or it's not there. So to put both together, I have always found this misleading. Because, uh, you know, uh, it's not fair to me. To me today, that dog has courage, very yes. He didn't have the hardness today that he should have, which means the intensity. On the other hand, he has been well for a few days in a row, or it's a young dog. But that can be good up. When you don't have the courage, you know, you just retire your dog. So this is why it is good to, to see a difference. Okay, so let's mark our 80 points here. Oh. Ah, number 12 is doing better here. No, wait. Yes. It's not fair to me. To me today, that dog has courage, very good. He didn't have the hardness today that he should have, which means the intensity. On the other hand, he has been well for a few days in a row, or it's a young dog. But that can be good up. When you don't have the courage, you know, you just retire your dog. So this is why it is good to, to see a difference. Okay, so let's mark our 80 points here. 
Oh. Ah, number 12 is doing better here. No, where? Yes, over right here. 18. Okay, that one, okay, that one is, I would say, the Oh my, my, 95 here? 93? <laughs> you are good, guys. Okay, you want to know you, I'll just show you. Okay. Century. Century. Now, this is... This is for a shoot cell too. Oh. Okay. Shoot some two, that's the intermediate level. Right? Which means the dark must be tougher. We cannot permit what we would be linear to shoot some one to the next level. Okay. So, the yard on bar. The blind web. Uh, sorry, search, guard, and bank. A total of 15 points. Uh, yeah, I'm adding the first three together here. In the dog search, find the decoy in bank. How much, how many points did you give? Who is it? Hmm? You can't really conduct it too many searches for distraction. You know, 12 people walking over there. Well, yes or no. You have to be understanding, but, you know, the dog is supposed to be doing his search. Well, anyway, for the search, which is the first five points of first time, I give a good points here. I didn't take anything for example. He was looking, true, he was disturbed, but he went to search his blinds. He did know his blinds? He walked away? I did not. Hmm? Yes, blind number five was where you had the decoy. Yeah, well, no, but he went to the, he went to one of the judges, which means that was like fighting the decoy. You know, if you have only three blind on a field, how do you deduct points because the dog didn't search five blind? You know, like here, if found a suspect before. That's not fair, <laughs> right? It's like deducting points for an article not found, an article which you didn't put on the track. Now, I know we could have you on that, but... Uh, <laughs> okay? Yeah, what do you want the dog to do? Okay, now, bark and gar, which means Let's put those two together, attitude of the blind. You know, how many points? What? How many points did you give? Nothing is good, it's not good enough, you have to judge. You gave zero. You gave five. Ha ha ha, you are not looking. That dog did bite. Took a big bite. <laughs> okay. The dog did bite. Biting is not guarding. So if five points for guarding are out of it. Then his barking could not be was not perfect. Because during the time he was biting, he was not guarding either. He was not barking, he was biting, right? So that cannot be perfect either. Then there was one last mistake. The hunter came up at the dog, he didn't call the dog by at him. That's a shoot of two here, that's not shoot of one. So I gave him two points for those ten. Which means, uh, plus the search, which means seven points out of him. Okay. The escape. How was the escape? Mm -hmm. 
What did you have to speak to Hawaii? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of lost. I gave him a score. Hmm? How are you doing? Okay. Dear Skip, this is until the outcome. Dear Skip, what's good? But the, dog, the guy had a problem making, making his dog out. Then the dog will bite after. So I gave him six points on that. Re attack. We are talking about the re attack, not the crash test. Huh? Okay, many the problems this dog has here was his out problem. Double command to out, etc. Surely you did not you did not need to be physical to out him, but the under had to be at the dog. That's not good. So here for the real attack I gave him So the dog came and did by out. But uh, those out say cannot be forgiven. We are at the intermediate level already. Okay, transports. Uh, first, let's say the transport, the bike transport at the time. Never heard about For five points. Okay, I gave him three points. The, 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 the other did the double command. He needed not only the command of this transport, but also during the last transport, after the courage test, when there is a transport to the judge, and this is part of the transport, those transports, the handler grab the dog by the collar. That's a no no. It's supposed to be official. So I give him three points out of five. Okay, so. They're old. <laughs> so let's say, so we have, okay, the attack, courage, of the courage test. There is no the attack, of course, it was a shoot and two. How did that dog perform? It was good pursuit, good arbite, and no out. So you see, that dog out only when the guy came. Mm -hmm. No out, then one more thing during the crash test. That handler is the type of person, if you do that in a trial, you are going to make the judge mad. You send your dog again, one more time, it is like you have done in obedience. You send your dog on the courage test before you were told to do so. You send the dog to attack when the handler was not far enough for the judge, uh, you know, when the judge decided, which means you make your dog go a shorter distance. Which means you give him an advantage. You pay for it. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the well, normally the judge will tell the agitator to tell, but surely it is dangerous too. So this combined with your D out, which were very limited. I know the dog did out. Before you grab him, at the last time, he even did a little bit. Out before you were exactly here, you were coming, but he heard you coming. So I knocked you. Otherwise, the attacks, you know, the bite work was good. I knocked you eight points here. So the total, let me check my total here. Total semi four points. A dog was being under control. Bite is not enough. You need 80 points to pass, which means that dog would not have passed in Schutzen 2. He would have been a Schutzen 1 acting the same way. Schutzen 1 is a beginner. I don't know. It could have been, you know, maybe just borderline. You know, uh, by depending, you know, if you're very close, you might say, ah, maybe because he's a beginner, but that's an intermediate. No, should be more than that. Courage on our test, he will have a hair, of course, uh, which in normal circumstances.
we knew already I would have given 10 definitely. But that dog needs more practice. If your dog bites, we are safe to support. Okay, right? And you out of a dozen out, and you correct them verbally and the outs. How would you say that? You know, you do that what? You do that, you talk to your dog to make him... No, what I'm saying is, the dog bites. Right? The dog bites. Right. You stop. Out. I say, out. You give the command out. out. He doesn't out. You say, boy, he outs. So you? He's like, if he doesn't out, you have permitted one command. Okay. That's the rule. Considered not, he doesn't out. Right? Yes, and I tell you, then do that again. Okay. And you do it the second time, boom. Okay. I have you even more than... For the shoots and two, the shoots and two, the shoots and one, how many times does the dog have to out? Once. Well, twice. Twice. And shoots and two, how many times? Four. Shoots and three, five. Which means the dog that does not have it is already at the disadvantage when he goes for a two than for a one because he's going to lose four times a certain number of points, shoots on one twice. So it's already more difficult. You don't have to take many more points off. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, same thing. Okay, let's say that's positive. Okay, okay. Let's say that's positive. <laughs> I try to be nice with you. Okay, that's what you call it. That person, that's a very generous person here. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Okay, let's see what's the better of you here. Yeah. Okay, that one, no, that, that number 12 is out definitely. He passed the dog, that you definitely need that one. This one has a good very close here. But in part, much soft in protection, definitely number 13. Here, you still find the dog, so that's still not that bad. Here is too much. Okay, here, let's see that one. Okay, 95 here. That's too bad here. Yeah. Judge the shoots are too much better, number one. I don't know what's number one, it must be someone who has been reading the rule for shoots and two. I assume it's her, they're going for shoots and two. Okay, here. Okay, that's who are five and ten? Who are five? What are you? Congratulations. Bunny? Ah, very good. <laughs> But it's, it's really not that pleasant because basically all the people are here, I think, uh, are uh, fairly knowledgeable, except for when you're, of course, you know, he's a beginner. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's got the gun? But, uh, uh, of course, we did have some rule changes. Also, uh, apparently, there's some uh, misunderstandings. Not necessarily misunderstandings, but uh, one judge may like one thing what he sees and another one likes another thing. And of course, uh, generally a judge is scoring uh, a little bit to his like. I mean, whatever he likes, he scores a little better than what he dislikes. And uh, you may see a dog that loses a point here or there because he does one thing and another judge says, well, uh, I really like to see that in the dog. and he. Uh, he takes points off for something else, and this does happen, definitely. But uh, I would say, uh, apparently you guys instigated this, so you must have some questions already in mind. So why don't you just start out? Who, uh... I'm not speaking German for a minute. Vielleicht wenn es mal ganz günstig war, man sagen, wenn du anfangen würdest mit der Pferde und wenn du mal den, den Leuten sagen würdest, was du bei einer Pferde berücksichtigst und, und wie du eben deine... Deine Pferdenarbeit bewertet. Ja, also ich will mal sagen, 
äh, ich will nicht von meiner Fährten aber sprechen, sondern sagen, wie ich den Richter Anwaltung das sage, was so ich ja. soll ich sagen? Ne? Um, Bernard wants to explain, like, if he has an apprentice judge and, you know, he help, he judges a track under him and he'd like to explain it as if he were talking, you know, to an apprentice judge and judging his court. Zur Pferdbeurteilung als solches, finde ich immer, gehört erstmal dazu, dass ich das Gesamtbild einer Pferde... So, in evaluation of a dog uh, tracking, he likes to evaluate the overall picture he sees. Dazu gehört natürlich in der Beurteilung selbst das Gelände gehört mit dazu. Uh, that includes uh, evaluating the terrain in which the, the dog is tracking. Was ich also sehen will, ist an sich die Nasenarbeit, also die Leistung des Hundes selbst. What he likes to see is the dog using his nose and working the track. Ich bin der Meinung, ich kann das nur beurteilen unter Berücksichtigung des Geländes. He feels the only way he can evaluate that is when he takes into consideration the type of terrain that the dog is tracking in. Des Windes, ja. And he considers the wind conditions. Das will ich mal sagen, des Witterungseinflusses selbst auf die Schiffe. And also the overall weather, if it's a very hot day or a cold day or a rainy day. Ich habe zum Beispiel eine... Ein Pferd, der was relativ schwer ist. Ja. Um, sometimes he sees a tracking area that's relatively difficult for a dog to track in. Nein, vielleicht war in Amerika jetzt kurz Gras drauf. Especially here in America, when you have short grass that's very dry, it's difficult for a dog. Und die Pferde wird morgens gelegt. You lay the track in the morning. Man hat ja schon erlebt, dass hier nach einer Stunde vielleicht das Gelände fast trocken gewesen ist. Entschuldigung. Er hat gesehen, eine Stunde später, dass das Tracking-Area sehr trocken war. Ja. Komm, erzähl ihm. Er hat gesagt, ich bin trocken. Du hast alle Jokes ausgelassen. Wir wissen, dass du alles aufgenommen hast. Es ist natürlich ganz klar, dass hier ein Hund schaffen muss. You must all realize that in a terrain like that, the dog really has to work in order to find its track. Und wenn noch die, die Pferde selbst vom Wind beeinflusst wird. Now if uh, the wind uh, comes up and blows the track around. Oder wenn man sagen, wir haben jetzt den Pferden selbst haben die kleinen Mulden, was hier. Oh, we have like little inclines and little valleys uh, on the yeah. track. So dass der, die Pferdenbahn an sich schwang ist. Für so uh, the um, track that the dog. Uh, tracks with his nose goes uh, maybe from side to side and it's not stationary all in one area. Du musst dir aber klar sein, dass der Verlauf einer Pferde nicht so ist, als Pferde so, in Rang bin, sondern wie der Hund tatsächlich die Pferdenwitterung hat. So we must realize that uh, the track may not be exactly where our footsteps are for the dog, but it may be a little to the left or a little to the right. Yes. Und wie der Hund jetzt die Fehler ausarbeitet, ist das Now, klar, weil er lässt sich leicht ablenken. If the dog gets easily distracted when he works out the track, hat er große Schwierigkeiten. Does he have a lot of difficulty? Das, äh, also that Rollen all Fehler enters Fehler. into his evaluation. Dann kommt der Winkel, was für Hunden fährt. <coughs> Then you come to the corner. Fährtenabfluss, ja. Uh, the corner, of course, he's explained to us before, is the end of a track to a dog. Kommt der Wind von hinten? If the wind is from behind, je nachdem wie stark er ist. Is it very strong? Wird ihr immer sehen, dass der der Hund der der Nase arbeitet. You will always see that a dog who is really using his nose will always overshoot the corner if the wind is from behind. Und nun kommt so an, wie er jetzt den Anschluss sucht zur Pferde. Now the deciding factor is how does he find the other leg. Ist dort bemüht mit der Nase. Does the dog try by using his nose? Man sagt sofort, ob er nervös ist. Es geht nicht weiter. You notice that is he nervous? Does he look to the left? Does he look to the right? Dann ist sowas grundsätzlich positiv. Then this is absolutely positive. Wird der Hund unsicher, fängt an zu kreisen. The dog becomes unsure and starts to circle. Dann ist es nicht mehr sicher, also Schwierigkeiten im Ausweichen. Then it's not assured tracking. Then he has some difficulty finding the corner. Und wenn er zum Tina Führer hilft dazu kommt, and then if he gets help from the handler, und dass der Führer helfen muss, and the helper feels, you know, he must help, dann geht natürlich alles Last des Hundes. Then of course that all gets deducted from the dog's points that he would be getting for tracking. Ich persönlich werde immer 
Demonteure werden und werden. Personally, will always give a higher evaluation der sich ohne Führerhilfe durcharbeitet. To the dog who really works his way out without getting any help from the handler. Als wie der ohne Führerhilfe helfen muss. Rather than the dog who gets a lot of help from der the handler. Der hat es doch nicht nötig, ja? Ja, yeah, he, he apparently needs it. Und wenn ich nur sehe, dass der Hund äh, sich so schön ablegen lässt, dass der Trank ist von der Pferde. Der Trank ist von der Pferde, dass sie ablegt. If the dog gets distracted uh, and uh, get, goes off the track. Ich muss das also auch erkennen, erkennen jetzt, ob wirklich der Trank da ist. You must recognize, aufgrund, is it, von, aufgrund von Zwang. Is it uh, just the drive to get off the track ja. because he has received ja. force? Da ist natürlich die Fehler auch da. Then of course you call him, you blow him up the track. Wenn ich aber sehe, dass der Hund immer noch am Suchen ist, das Fortgang zu suchen ist, ja. But if the dog has lost the track and, also, and continually tries to find it again. Da ist natürlich nun der, der Anschluss von der Fährte verschwunden, von mir ist verschwunden, wo ich neige, da kann nichts mehr sein. However, is he so far over the end of a lake? Das that uh, it's not possible for him to find his way around, klar, then of course he has to blow him up the track also. The uh, Gegenstände. The articles. Ja, da sage ich immer den Richtern daran, es kommt drauf an, Norris. dass der Hund den Gegenstand Norris. sauber wird. Stay down here. He always sauber. tells his apprentice judges that it's uh, important that the dog points out ja. uh, the article in a clean manner. Uh, Verweisen heißt, er kann von mir aus einmal stehen. Pointing out means he can either stand oder kann einmal sitzen, er spielt keine Rolle. Entscheidend ist Verweisen. Das ist Verweisen. As long as, it is, uh, as long as he points it out. Er braucht auch nicht korrekt vorne zu liegen. He also does not have to lie directly in front of the article. Er soll nur sauer verweisen. He still again should uh, point out the article. Also, sauer verweisen Ehrlich. verstehe ich auch. Er wird vom Nehmen vom Gehen, aber nicht wie die Fächschuhe. When he says point out correctly, he says that the dog should uh, send the article, but he cannot play with it, move it or pick it up. Ja. Wenn der Hund natürlich den Gegenstand, äh, wie man sagen, äh, sich rauflegt, ist das kein Problem mehr. If he should lie on top of the article, that is no pointing out. Dann ist das, ähm, wie man sagen, mit dem Sitz nehmen des Gegenstandes. Then that's almost like taking possession of the article. Man kommt dann gut, wenn man sagt, er sollte sauber verweisen. He would tell the people then that the dog should point out the article more correctly. Ja. Und dann dazu kommen die Führerfehler. But then in addition to that you have to handle the handler errors. Ja. Und grundsätzlich ist so, dass die Prüfungsordnung Sinn ist für einen Führer und Richter. And basically, uh, the um, trial rule book is binding uh, for the judge and for the dog handler. They both have to abide by it. Der, äh, Hunde, der Richter soll die Pferden einweisen. The judge should uh, direct the track laying. Darunter verstehe ich aber nicht, dass ich jetzt einpfeife. So uh, however, he does not believe in, you know, whistling when the track layer should either do a turn or drop an article. Ich lasse mir von Jungs was das Gelände zeigen. He has the uh, trial chairman show him the area where they're going to try. Ja, und dann zeige ich mir, wir haben schon eins und zwei. Dann teile ich mir so ein, dass ich äh, auf dem kürzesten Weg zum Endziel komme. Then he divides them up so, you know, that he gets to the finish on in the, in the best way, whichever, whatever tracking area is uh, available and how many dogs do you have to track. Und in Deutschland ist es so, dass wir immer die Nähe haben müssen vom Eigentümer. In Germany you always have to have uh, permission from the owner of the uh, area that you can go out there and lay track. Ja. Also ich